Hello, this is Terry Cron uh, with Heavy Duty Powertrain. This is going to be the uh, October tip of the month. And I uh, thought I'd throw it out there, especially to the mechanics of uh, that are dealing with uh, certain fault codes. And I just thought I'd share with you what, uh, what we're, uh, we're finding out there. Uh, on the selects, uh, the 343 code seems to be uh, 342, all dealing with internal failure. If you get that code that comes up and your truck starts sometimes and then it won't, and and uh, uh, and the uh, 434 code, I believe. Let me double check that. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, 434 code. <clears throat> That's dealing with low voltage. Uh, so let's talk about the selects right now. So 434, 343, 342. And if you get a lot of in injector codes in the 300s, 350s, 340s, 50s, and stuff like that, that don't seem to be putting out enough voltage, and you already went through and checked all the input voltage going through the ECM, then uh, that uh, 342, 3, 352 code sometimes is pretty pointing towards the uh, ECM, isn't putting out enough voltage. So uh, if you see those come up on your dash or your road relay, then uh, you know you probably need to replace the ECM that instead of just taking it somewhere and paying for all that head scratch and stuff. Uh, select plus, uh, same thing, uh, although they have an additional code called a 111 code, and that means microprocessor internal failure. That means one of your EEPROMs out of the set of three is lifted up, getting hot. And on that note, I really believe that these, uh, uh, especially on the select pluses, that they really have a, a grounding issue. Uh, and if that ECM gets hot enough because it hasn't got a processor fan in there or anything to cool it, um, it just gets so hot that uh, it gets that uh, the microprocessor EEPROM set, one or more of the chips start lifting up and you lose communication, and especially after you're running for a while. But a 111 code on a Select Plus, you're dead in the water. No sense doing anything until you replace that, but on that note, I'm starting to suggest um, anytime you get a 111 code or even a 343 code. 343 code, first thing you would do is throw an engine positioning sensor on it. That doesn't make it go away and it still comes back, then your ECM's bad. And again, the, I think it's the 434 low voltage code, no low power to the field solenoid. That's going back to the usual select or select plus that's saying that the ECM power supply in the board is not putting out enough uh, 5 volt and 12 volt power to power up the ECM correctly and run it. And, and uh, you know, as long as you've done your homework, then those are the codes that can give you a lot of trouble. So, uh, and again, I don't mind answering your questions. If you do call in and you're dealing with something like that, just write down your fault codes and, uh, and we'll go over that for you. So, all right, that's tip of the month for October and uh, hope that helps you. And the only other tip I got is <laughs> probably an important one that I forgot to share with all of you. But if you're going to wash your engine, especially if it's older, few years, five years, six, ten 
years older, make sure you cover up that ECM with a garbage bag real good. You don't want to spray the ECM and get that water. It'll seep in through the plugs. And, uh, you know, they're out there in the elements bad enough anyways, but you're really, if you go and put 1,000, 15 pounds of pressure, you're going to put water in there and uh, it's going to short out the ECM. So uh, I'll uh, just remember that one. I actually put that video up to a little more detail, share some uh, experiences that people that's called in from leaks in their cow ducking and water running in and falling down on top of the ECM and causing all these problems for them. So, all right, good luck.